Good evening and welcome once again to Praying Through the Psalms, our nightly chance to come together as a community online, to pause from the busyness or maybe even, I don't know, the boredom of the day and to come together into the presence of God. And we do this because it's only in the presence of God that we can find true perspective and lasting peace for our lives. As last night's psalm entreated us, be still and know that I am God. Tonight we're going to be reading Psalm 47, uh, reflecting and praying from that. So if you have a Bible at home there or a, a Bible app on your phone, uh, please open it to Psalm 47 now. But first, no matter how we're feeling, what kind of day we've had, let's be intentional now about giving ourselves and our time and our focus in these moments to God as we give ourselves to him in prayer. Father God, right now, in this moment, we choose to pause, to breathe more slowly, to lay down our agenda, our desires, our frustrations and worries before you, to offer you ourselves in this moment as we are. Thank you, Father, that you welcome us in this way. But thank you also that you do not want to leave us as we are. You come to shape and to mould and to transform us, to perfect us in the image of your Son. So, Lord, we say in this moment, come, Holy Spirit, and have your way in our hearts and our minds. Please speak to us this evening through this psalm and lead us in prayer. Draw near to us as we draw near to you, we ask. Amen. So tonight we uh, look together at Psalm 47. <clears throat> it's quite a short psalm. I don't know if you already are aware of it, but this is a, a very exuberant worship song. It's an anthem of praise to God that entreats others to join in with the worship of God too. Because all people are invited to worship God. You are invited to worship God. Because we have all been created to live in a loving relationship with our Creator. The Westminster Shorter Catechism uh, states, man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. That's our purpose in life, knowing and loving God and being known and loved by him. It's intrinsic to how and why we're made. And so many people who come to know God later in life, myself included, after searching for purpose and meaning in other things in life uh, that they think will satisfy but ultimately don't. We can talk of a hole or a void that we know that only God can fill. And when we make our love relationship with God our, our number one relationship in life, when we put him first, all kinds of blessings will follow. But when we don't do that, when we live our lives apart from him and live self-centred lives, all kinds of problems will follow. And it's because God loves us that he warns us of the dangers of, of disregarding this, this design for our life. And one of the keys to avoiding disaster, I think, is worship. Worship saves us from being self-centred and makes us God-centred. And as it's described in, in this psalm, in Psalm 47, worship sounds very emotional and noisy. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout, 
to God with cries of joy. God has ascended amid shouts of joy. The Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. It also includes lots of singing in verses 6 and 7. Now, of course, there is a time for quiet, contemplative uh, worship. But there's nothing wrong with great exuberance in worship as our adoration and wonder at what God has done for us bubbles over in uh, extravagant action. Our worship should include and involve our emotions just as uh, our emotions should be involved in any loving human relationship. I mean, we're good, aren't we, at expressing our emotions in other contexts such as uh, football or rugby matches or concerts when we cheer our approval for uh, our team and uh, support what they're doing. So what, why should it be any different in our adoring and cheering God in what he does in our lives? I think that's the first thing to take from this psalm, to be encouraged to unleash our emotions in our worship and praise. Secondly, the songwriter, obviously a Jew, because the whole Bible is Jewish, makes the appeal in his lyrics to the nations. Clap your hands, all you nations, shout to God with cries of joy. Now, uh, whenever we see the word nations in scripture, it refers to everyone in the world who is not Jewish, not yet part in, not yet part of the people of God. In verse nine, uh, the psalmist declares that even rulers of Gentile nations will acknowledge Israel's God as the one true God. Since the creation of the church in Jerusalem, when God reconstituted what it meant to be the people of God. And remember, as we said uh, on Sunday, the church is not where we meet, but who we are. Since God created uh, the church, he initiated a movement of God's people to include both Jews and Gentiles. And over nearly 2000 years, millions and billions of people of nearly every nation on earth have discovered salvation through Jesus Christ, including you and me. And though it's true to say that uh, in this day in 2020, there are many more Christians alive today in this generation than at any period in history, there are still millions and millions of people who do not know the life completing joy of a relationship with God. They are lost from that at this moment. And it's incumbent on us to do something about it. So may the, the reading and the proclamation of, of the words of this psalm be an encouragement to us not to be ashamed to sing, to shout, to clap, to dance in our praise and worship of God. Uh, now, we can, of course, do that at home. Uh, but won't it be great when we can come back together again to sing safely in a building. So let's be resolved to make our public worship so much more naturally and supernaturally joyful when we do come back together. But also let the words of this psalm be an encouragement to us to not give up praying for others in the world to know this same joy too. If you uh, want to be a participant rather than just a, a spectator, but either is fine, uh, then now is the time to open your Bible to uh, Psalm 47 and let's uh, read these words together. And actually, maybe even at home there, you can read out loud the words in whatever translation you have as I read them here. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King 
over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob whom he loved. God has ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing to him a psalm of praise. God reigns over the nations, God is seated on his holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble, as the people of the God of Abraham, for the kings of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. How awesome is the Lord Most High. How awesome is the Lord Most High. How awesome is the Lord Most High. Lord God, as we read these words, we ask you to forgive us for the times that our praise has been empty where we have been ashamed and embarrassed to show our emotions, how we truly feel in our worship of you. Lord, set us free to worship you in spirit and in truth, to worship you wholeheartedly with not just our mind, but our spirit and our being and all that we are. Lord, set us free to worship in this way at home, maybe as we're putting on a worship song, as we're doing the ironing or whatever we might be doing. But Lord, we pray that as we in the next weeks prepare to gather again in one place as your people and to sing together in worship and praise, that you will set us free to worship you wholeheartedly. Father, we thank you that it is your desire that people of all nations are able to clap their hands and to shout to you with cries of joy, to know what it is to uh, be loved by you and to love you. And so, Lord, we pray for the peoples of the nations and we pray tonight for those who have given up uh, the country of their birth, given up their jobs, have moved to uh, live in other places, to learn new languages and to share your truth and your love, Lord, with others. We pray for missionaries all the way around the world tonight. We pray for their encouragement. We pray for their protection. And Lord, we pray for a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit upon those who share faith, Lord, in a country that is, is not their own. We give you thanks for our own homegrown missionary uh, in Gareth McBurney and pray for your blessing on him as he prepares to return to Ibiza to complete, Lord, your calling on his life for this season in that place. We pray, Lord, that you will, um, uh, you will bless this, this time of returning, that there will be a quickening, Lord, in his spirit, that there will be a greater anointing upon him, that people will come to faith in this time that he returns in a way that maybe they haven't in, in his first two years. Lord, we give you thanks that you are the king of all the earth, that nobles of nations and kings of the earth, Lord, will also come to bow the knee before you as this psalm declares. So we would pray for those in authority in the nations. We pray for people of influence to come to faith uh, in Jesus Christ, to make it possible for uh, yet more people um, in their community and in their place of influence to know you. Finally, Lord, we thank you that you are the King of all the earth 
This reminds us that you've not been taken uh, by surprise with COVID-19, that this global pandemic is something that you have power over and that you are working all things together for the good of those who love you. We thank you that where the church is running towards rather than away from the need, you are our blessing and people are coming to faith. And Lord, we pray for you to be at work in the world in this time, for a mighty harvest, Lord, of many people to come to faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's finish our time of prayer together by praying these words on the screen. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>